righty, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're uh, we're in. Uh, yeah, we're we're ready to go. Hi, how are you? This is Alex, and this is our uh, little Monday get together. And uh, here we go. Da 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 da. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Oh, we got people waiting to be on here, and so on. So why should I even do a monologue here? Let's just get going with this. First, let me just make sure we are up and running and okay on Facebook. Let me see here. Are we there? Uh, yes, we are. Are we running? There we go. Okay. All right. Now it's time to bring in some of these people. Here comes uh, Len LaFrisco and Edward Berger and Paul Levin and Scott Boddicker and Charlene Solis, and uh, uh, let's see, who else? Uh, Andrew Deutsch is here. I'm uh, People are coming in so fast, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, um, <laughs> there's our good friend, uh, Mandy O'Brien, waving hi. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did I say hello to everybody, Paul? No. Oh. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> you're you're oh yeah you're my wife i'm the one yeah you're the latest wife <laughs> yeah uh anyway let me see here let me make sure we're, we're recording and we're the live. current oh. mrs schwartzman huh the current mrs schwartzman the current mrs schwartzman yeah i'm just trying to make sure i have all these uh all these things going and everything but we're recording okay we're, we're good hello everybody how are you you just yeah. say you just say the best for last. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, how did you get there first? You weren't up early, were you, Marjorie? Um, I don't. It, it was there, and then I was waiting for a while. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, because you're you're like the first in line here. You're usually not. Ah. You, have, you have the coveted Shecky spot. Ah. Yeah, yeah. He always got that spot for some reason. He always got that spot. You know, but anyway, I booked my plane ticket this last week. For where? For Shecky's memorial. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, that's a. It's I, had a I had a conversation with uh with one of Letterman's head writers. Um, I'm, I'm prepping for a, an episode coming up, and it just got me so. I miss him so much because uh, when I was talking to this guy. And he was giving me these little inside things that I could ask that might not have been, um, you know, questions that hadn't been asked before. And that's what Rick used to do for me. And it just got me after the phone call ended. It was a nice phone call, but it just got me so sad. I just miss him. Well, yeah, I I'm doubly sad. So you know, you can I can imagine how you feel. You yeah. Know. Uh, but anyway, let's let's uh, let's think of happy stuff. I mean, can I tell, uh, can I say? Uh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> she must have heard this. It's coming. Marjorie bet me a hundred dollars. I wouldn't talk about this today, and I said I'm not betting you a hundred dollars on it because <laughs> I'm definitely going to talk about this. <laughs> so you remember I went to that doctor who gave me all those blood tests. First yeah. of all, they couldn't find the blood. Then when they found it, they did like twenty five tests on it. Sent a bill to to my uh, to uh, Medicare for five thousand dollars for less than an hour visit you remember that and then he never called me back yeah. the following week to tell me how the test came out guess who he never i got, got the results guess, guess who i got a call from today <laughs> two months later two months two months later and it's not him it's his it's his assistant or nurse or whatever and she calls me up and says, I, this, I'm calling from Dr. Blah, blah, blah's office. And um, he wants to uh, schedule a routine follow-up. I said, what? And she <laughs> says, I said, now, is this because he wants to tell me how the test turned out and so on and so forth? Maybe there's something there he's concerned with or whatever. She's, oh, no, this is just a routine follow-up. I said, to, five grand. I, I said to what I said, you may look i was i had more blood tests than are known to mankind with you people you charged me five thousand dollars for it and then i never got a call 
Oh, she said, oh, the reason you didn't get a call is- They never saw the results. He said, there was probably nothing concerning in the results. <laughs> he, he said, he would have told me to call you if he was concerned about anything in the results. And I went, oh. And so now he's calling me to do a routine follow-up and he didn't have the decency to call me and tell me the tests were okay? Hmm. Or have you call me and tell me the tests were okay? Because he doesn't make any money calling you and telling right. you the tests. $5,000 in his pocket. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no, and I said, now, this is not because there's anything serious in the blood test. He said, oh, no, it's just a routine follow-up. He'd like to see you and, hmm. and, and take a little more blood. Yeah. And money. That's what he said. That's what she said. And I'm going, he's, he, ching, 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 another $5,000. You know what? A routine with him is five thousand. I'm sorry. What the nerve? Yeah. I mean the absolute. And I told her, you know, this is uncalled for. This is not the way doctors do business, and I don't want to do business with you any longer. Mm. You know. Be you. Be you. Yeah. But she said to me, "Oh no, he would have told me if there was something wrong to call <laughs> you." So there was, undoubtedly there was nothing wrong in the blood test. I, I couldn't think that there wasn't something wrong in the blood test. You know, you well, take a blood test, you got to find, at my age, something wrong. Alex, what? they never even say you the results of the blood test. No, I just got the bill with the blood test they took. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, even my, my uh, what our, our, our doctor, our, our uh, what do we call them? Our, our internist. internist that we use. When we did, he does the test and he goes out and he gets all the blood tests and everything. He sends us the results. He sends us the, all the results he gets from the blood test. Yep. Every doctor does. Every doctor does. Yeah. Well, yeah. not this one, not Mr. $5,000. <laughs> and I'll see him in the two aspirin and I'll see you in the morning. You know, I mean, I mean, the colossal gall of that. <laughs> no, he would have called you if there was anything wrong. Oh, that would be nice, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I never heard of a doctor that doesn't, you know. I have a urologist who uh, does a blood test with me every year, and the following day, he, when he gets his blood back, I get immediately an email that says, "Hey, your blood test was great." You know, I every doctor email would have been fine. You know, every so, doctor, every doctor, yeah. So tests were fine. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my doctor said. Come back and see me again. I need a new yacht. You know, <laughs> you know, and I feel I feel I, how I feel about this is that I, it makes me mad because there are doctors out there are having a hard time of it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and but they also deal honestly with people. You know, I mean, I have my urologist who said he's going down to four days a week because he can't deal with the insurance companies anymore. Oh. It's not Medicare that's the problem. It's the insurance companies. And I, you know, I mean, I just think that I just, I don't know, maybe I just want a little kind of decency and competency where doctors are concerned. I mean, I'm sure after they cut off your toes, Charlie, they called you the following month <laughs> and said, how are your toes doing, right? And they checked to see if this little piggy went to market or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you do with my little toe? Well, it went market. <laughs> So um, a big toe, yeah. No, but I mean, you know, you've had enough medical I I interaction, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm, you know, I'm, I just like to know that I, hey, it's okay. We sometimes found a few things that are a little disconcerting. We'd like to follow up on, but you know, you're fine, good, you know. But I don't want to have to. It's too, and it's almost over two months now. It would have been two months about a week ago. That's and great. Going, you know. Uh, so, I don't we'll know. We'll call in the third month, I bet. What? Yeah. We'll call again. Yeah, the, and the I would imagine since month. I gave her a big ration of crap, right? That maybe he'd call me back and say, "Oh, well, listen, I'm sorry we didn't call you back and let." No, he won't do that. I'm sure he won't do that. I mean, come on, you know. I want to know the origin of the bet. Why did Marjorie bet a hundred dollars that? Oh, Alex she would she bet I would. She said I would bet you a hundred dollars. Uh, we'll you'll talk about it. You, I'll talk oh, about oh, it. Okay, yeah. Of course. Oh, so <laughs> so she owes me a hundred dollars because I no no, no 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 I did I won you you bet I won. Me, 
you bet me that I would talk about it. And I did talk about it. So right, you owe so me a hundred dollars. I won. You owe um, me the hundred. <laughs> hey, listen, if you ever need a new uh, uh, blood and cancer guy, just let me know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also the name of this organization, I'm going to say who they are. Can blood and blood and cancer, cancer and blood specialists. Company. Somehow, I Company. Just for, if I, you know, if I were running their PR, I'd say I wouldn't put cancer as the first word. Blood <laughs> should start it all off, and then <laughs> hey, you might have cancer in your blood, so we're here if that's the case. But it's not blood and cancer specialists. Oh, good, great, you know, yeah. And that's life, folks. That's life. Andrew, are you there? I hmm. think he's on the phone. He's on yeah, the phone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. He's a busy guy. Yeah. His mute's on. So anyway, I, I did radio last week. Yeah. What was that? I, I was on the radio. <laughs> I did. Uh, uh, this, I, there's a station here in town. They called me. This woman called me and she said, so-and-so does a show on our station and he's going to be out this week. And we're wondering if you'd like to come in tomorrow and do his show. And I said, well, okay, but let's get a few things straight here. First, uh, what is the format of your station again? And she said it to me and she says, well, we are a Christian right-wing radio station. <laughs> awesome. So that the first person they thought of was and you. And I said, uh, you do realize I'm Jewish and I'm a big lefty. <laughs> And she said, yeah, but that's okay. Said, oh, you must be hard up for a follow-up guy here, you know. So I said, okay, I'll do it. What the hell, you know. Plus, uh, and so I went there, and uh, it turns out it was a state, it was a, the same location I had done one of the last couple of programs that I did when I was a, did a few things on WOR, okay. And it was their station, when I went there the first time and I was working in the same exact studio. And then right next door, they had another studio and it was another radio station they own, which was WMCA, which is the radio station I started on in New York. Wow. So I, I felt like I had gone full circle here, you know, uh, and uh, now I could go home and die. I, you know, <laughs> great cool. interview with Lori Thompson the other night. Thank you for oh, doing that. Oh, that was wonderful. Oh, yeah. that was that was on. Um, I I miss her. I loved her. She looks great. She looks terrific. She's you know she and she's healthy and you know she's she's married and she's happy and she's traveling the world and you know. You guys were a great team. And we're we're gonna do. There's one more interview that I did with her, and then I'm gonna do some more with her as well because the reaction to it was so good. You know? Good. It's like we hadn't missed a beat. Right. You know? Yeah. It yeah. seems very natural. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even Marjorie doesn't know the relationship that I had to Lori Thompson. Neither do. Oh, let's see. Neither do any of these other people here. Oh, I, I, I only do. the Bay Area types. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Only the Bay Area people know that. You so, talk about it in the uh, on the podcast then, or on the uh, the wet, the series, life in the passing lane. I think. Mm, what did I talk about? I think you talked about the relationship. Is she the one that went to the Olympics with you? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah you talk about it. You talk about the relationship there. Yeah. Sounds like you guys had an awesome repartee. Well, I mean, we spent. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, there's a, there are two families you have. You have the family at home, as we all know. Yeah. And then you have the family at work. There's a there's a work family. They're yeah. your second. They're your secondary family, and she was like my, she was like my wife for many yeah. years. She you know, work wife, work wife, yeah. my work wife. Yeah, I, yeah. I woke up every morning to her. You know, and uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, and after a while, it becomes very symbiotic. The relationship you start having with each other. You know. And I really didn't have that relationship with anybody else on the show because there was nobody else that was that closely associated with the show. There were people that came in and out. Bubs, La Bubbles was on for a while, so traffic guy, you know, and I'd have this person. Lisa, Lisa was it Lisa Carr? Yeah, she well, she did the traffic for a while. Mm. And, then, and uh, she she worked for a company that did the traffic reports for radio. Oh how about your producer, Albert? Well, uh, Albert wasn't my producer in San Francisco. 
No, but here, but you were very close. You were talking I was, about oh, I was very person. close to Albert. Yeah, yeah. Your uh, other work wife. <laughs> my other work wife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then Joe Rogelski was what? Was he on the first? Uh, the he was KML? the news guy. He was the new, my first, my news guy at uh, KML and the Quake, but he didn't make it with me to Live 105 because gotcha. contractual problems where he was still under contract to the old radio station mm. and couldn't leave it. Mm. So they came to me and they said, hey, here's this woman. We got a woman doing the news in the morning called Lori Thompson. Would you like to give her a shot? Because we like her. And, you know, you might like her, but we just like to give her a shot if possible. And I didn't want to put anybody out of work just because I was coming to that radio station. So I mm. said, sure. And that's how I, 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 I adopted her or I inherited <laughs> her or she was willed to me. <laughs> and it worked out very well over the years, you know. I mean, there were some negative aspects to it. And we talk about it, I think, maybe in the next interview. That she had a she had a slight drug problem for a while. So did I, as a matter of fact. But you know, hers affected her work a lot. Mm. And uh and, and but she she got her life together, you know. And I, I love I love Lori. I always have loved Lori a lot. Mm. You know, well, she is my other wife, you know. So yeah. uh, but um uh, so we so we did that. But anyway, so I did this thing on the radio station, and then we did a little thing afterwards in the subway. And I looked at it after we did it, put it up on YouTube or on Facebook. And um, I really was looked good there. I looked happy. Mm -hmm. I suddenly mm -hmm. realized that doing an hour in a radio station, in a radio station, not sitting yeah. here in my house trying yeah. to do a show, just invigorated me, you know? I don't know how I would feel today if I like work for, for a radio station and I did my show from home. Most people do their shows from home now. Mm. And I don't know that I would enjoy doing that. No, I but you enjoy... lit up when, when you did that hour. Really? Did I look like you I did. was? You looked great and you sounded great. Yeah. You're happy. And you didn't have to look great. It's radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it just invigorated me and, and uh, made me feel that, gee, I, you know, I really do miss this. You know? You've been doing it a long time. Of course, you missed it. I, 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 I yeah, absolutely. You know, and yeah. uh, uh, if somebody yeah. offered me a job tomorrow, even though radio is, come on, what's radio now? Yeah. You know, um, people go, uh, "What do you do?" Well, I have a radio program. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, have, do you have a podcast? Yeah. Oh well, then what is it? <laughs> you know, I mean. Nobody cares about radio anymore. Are you kidding me? In fact, what they're thinking of doing, have you heard about this? They're thinking car companies are thinking about stopping putting AM radio. AM. Yeah. 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 Uh, which I was thinking about the other day. Somebody asked me that question on this show. And I said, well, you know, things change. You know, things evolve. Certain things disappear. Uh, that's the, the way of things, you know. Can you believe we lived through actually getting CDs, which were a miracle? And now they're, you know, you don't need a CD anymore. You don't need they're, CDs they're at all. Exactly. I used to collect DVDs because it was better than laser discs or tapes. You yep. know, it took up a lot less room. Yep. And uh, now uh, I, 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 I get rid of them. I put, I put a lot of them on, on my computer. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But I mean, things change. Here's another example. Find me a phone booth. Oh yeah, <laughs> Super, Superman would be in a lot of trouble these days. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> but then I thought uh, later on, and I should have mentioned this on that show, was that even though I said things change and you have to get used to times and things changing, that the important part of there's a one important thing about AM radio was its signal. Now its yeah. signal wasn't as good as FM, didn't sound as good as FM. But the signal went further. It traveled like crazy. So yeah. that if there's a tragedy or some kind of national emergency or some kind of local emergency, you can broadcast it pretty much on an AM radio station and, and it will just blast out to everybody, mm -hmm. even if it's a low wattage uh, station. That's like uh, uh, Woody Allen on radio days. Yeah. 
did, yeah. did, a, did a thing about that, about a, a mining thing. Some kid was trapped and it went all over the, the, the country. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember that happening. It was a little girl. And I'm trying to remember what her name was now. Um, I, I brought it up a couple of months ago and I remembered the name. And it was, was it girl. Jessica? Was it Jessica? Jessica, I don't know if it's Jessica. No, no Jessica was the girl who fell down the well. Oh, yeah. The oh. girl who fell down the well. Oh, okay. We're talking about a girl who fell down a well. Yeah. And I think Kathy Fiscus that might have been the name, actually. And it, uh, I was a kid at the time, and every parent was listening to the news broadcasts on that thing. And finally, he brought the girl up, and she was dead. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, just like in Woody Allen's radio days, you know. Mm. So, you know, I mean, um, but radio has this, uh, this incre AM has this signal which can permeate much further than, mm. a, than FM. FM gets stopped by a rock in the road, mm. you know, and, and that's the value of AM. And I think you should have AM radios just as a matter of safety. I don't know why they're pulling AM radios out because how much does it cost to put them in? Nothing. You know, one what, extra chip or something. What was the first year you were on a radio station of any power? Your first professional job, what year? Oh, I mean, my first professional job? Well, yeah. that was in Marin County. So what, what year was that-ish? When did I actually start getting paid by them? I think it was, I was 17 at the time. So I had to be about 1957, maybe. Okay. So, so what, what I was, the point I was about to make was the fact that do you ever think about that there is 63 years or 65 years of your shows at uh, light years, 65 light years ah, away yeah. going out? Well, I, I wonder about that. I, nobody ever was able to answer that question for me about how long these signals actually permeate out. Oh, you know, forever. Wow. Well, forever. does it? Well, okay. Yeah. Charlie is the science guy. Charlie, yeah. Would those signals keep going? In other words, could we go to a certain place in space and sit there and wait for my 1957 first broadcast? To... Absolutely. Yep. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. And would you please translate your shirt, Charlie? Oh. <laughs> is it uh, pie? I, is it uh, something about pie? I eat yeah. some pie. <laughs> <laughs> I root of minus one is I. I. Yeah. Two cubed is eight. And sigma is the symbol for sum. Oh. I ate some fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. You. you want to see my t shirt? Oh, boy. Ready Stand up. Me? Ready? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Wait. Okay. And Those on the back, fun. I found out, I, but we bought these in China. Wow. And I, I bought this in China. Obama was around. And, and on the back, it says, Obama. Wow. Oh. Obama. Obama. <laughs> yeah, I love this shirt. I really love it. I don't yeah. I don't wear it out on the street because I figure in Harlem I'd get beaten up or something, you know. Yeah. But I always, I loved it. I thought it was terrific. As soon as I saw it, I bought like two or three of them. I had to have them. <laughs> and the hat remember the hat well i have i have that hat i wear that hat all the time uh i wear it on the show although i wear it less th now that china is just being such a dick you know <laughs> they're they're not nice people now no they were real nice when we went there well the, the chinese people are incredible we're they're, they're great wonderful. they're great it's the government we're talking about yeah. the government who's yeah you know, um uh, eventually they'll get overthrown you know because they're acting in a way that is not to the benefit of the he people. put himself in for a lifetime yep yeah but you know he's not going to get overthrown so quickly but then again so did tuck so was tucker carlson or so he thought <laughs> 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 Yeah, what are you do, what are you doing at six o'clock at night now? Now that he's not on anymore, <laughs> was, wasn't he on at eight? I think he was on at eight. I, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't. Never watched him. Well, see, he doesn't. Time. He doesn't. He didn't uh, need any. He doesn't need that money. He was making. No. He is going to make. They owe him thirty million dollars, oh. and they will have to keep paying him. 
until his contract is over with. Yes. But, but he, he doesn't need it. He's a trust fund baby. Yep. Mm. He's got more than that money. His, that money was chump change to him. Mm. Yep. You know, so he didn't need it. He doesn't need to work another day in his life if he doesn't want to. You know, so and then Don Lemon, I think, is owed 20 million. Jeez. Oh. Imagine it's worth that much money to not have you come in. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know? Uh, I've, um, I've had that happen to me where I got paid for not working. And everyone went, so nice. It's wonderful. I said, it's insulting because mm -hmm. they're willing to pay insulting. me all that insulting. money just to stay away from them. <laughs> you know? So. Isn't it technically that you don't go somewhere else? Well, you, yeah. It, well, it's a whole thing. I, I had it where I got this. I got paid for a year and a half or something. Uh, and uh it was, they could not prevent me from taking another job. Right. But, but, if I, but, no, but if I took another job, they still owed me money if I took a job that was less than I was making from them. Mm. Right. Okay. So they had to pay the difference. So I could go somewhere else, but that would mean they didn't have to pay me as much because it would be minus whatever this new outfit was paying me. And if I got and you would be taking their market share. No, that's a different, that's a whole different consideration. They wouldn't. Oh, okay. All right. You know, I mean, I imagine they could have kept me from going to work anywhere else, but they 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 really can't, if they don't want you to come in and do your job, they can't deny you the ability to work. I think at least in California, that's the law. Mm -hmm. So they can pay you, they can pay you not to work for anybody else. And if you don't work for anybody else, fine. If you suddenly work for somebody else, then they owe you the difference. Like, let's say I, I made $100,000 a year, but this job I took for 50, they would still owe me the 50, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't owe me the 100. So, so that's what that's all about. So. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I used to be a big <laughs> shot. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know him then. Yeah, uh, I, I did. I think he was a big shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I was pretty much a big shot in the baby. Oh my god! Every everybody whose name I every time I mention his name, people go, "Oh my god, yeah, the guy used to be on the radio. I love that guy." Yeah. Still alive? <laughs> He's still alive. Well, I've gotten that a couple of times too. <laughs> well, that's what I miss about about Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. Is that every time I would see him, he says, Alex Bennett's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. I hate to say that, you know. <laughs> you know, or as he as he used to say, wait a minute, where is it here? Um <laughs> Alex Bennett is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Could you hear that? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Now, how come Great you can hear? How come you could hear that, but I when I do something else, people can't hear it? Eh, well, I, I don't get it. That needs to be your uh, tagline. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you need like one of those staples buttons that you had. You just press that button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Old staples button. Actually, I had a, a one time I was walking down the street in New York, like down, I was walking down Sixth Avenue, and I think, and on the other side of Sixth Avenue, the top of it, I hear. Alex Bennett still alive, and it's Gilbert. You know, uh, it was kind of my theme song. You know, God, I mean, you know, it's it's it, it, the trouble with getting older is all the people you know who are dead. You know, it's just it's just you know when I think about Gilbert, you know, as an example. Yeah, um, uh, tons of close friends of mine. You know. Uh, who are gone and you just go gee that's disgusting you know um wh why why did they go early and i went late and yeah. i'm still here and you're still here <laughs> well you you yeah. yeah speaking of which alex i was going to ask you do you have a do you have a harry belafonte story no because oh. i never knew harry belafonte <laughs> Never, you never crossed paths with him. No, no. I should, I should have just crossing the street in Harlem, but I didn't. Yeah. No, I never, I never met up with him. You know. I crossed paths with him once. Did you? 
Yeah, we were on a, a march. Were you? I don't know if you were with us, but uh, we we uh, a, a, a group of us went to New York and saw uh, a show, and I, I, I could remember if I can't remember the name but at the moment. But uh, later that day, we went to see uh, um, Raisin in the Sun, mm. and uh, uh, just as we were about to walk into the movie, there was a like a flurry. And there came Harry Belafonte in the flesh, and he was just about as gorgeous as I thought he would be. Wow. Really? He really? came in with, with his wife and, and a couple of other people. And this this was a, this was a movie version of it. Uh, 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 the Raising the Sun. Uh, or was it a play? The play version. No, it was a, it was a movie. It was a it movie. Was a movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. But um, I treasure that moment. <laughs> As wow. <a> <laughs> yeah i never i never met any big star walking into a movie never mm -hmm. you would think in new york city you would occasionally see some movie person going in to see a movie but no it, years ago i was walking down the street with my friend and we saw flip wilson <laughs> across the street mm -hmm. or maybe he was on our sidewalk but coming in our direction yeah. and i'm going like this i'm pointing to her about to say look who's there i'm, I'm pointing and he goes yep that's me <laughs> <laughs> that's great um, um uh, it, well anybody here uh, who uh, let me just ask this of various people marjorie who was the most famous person i mean beside me when that you that you've met when in your life, go around the other way. Nah. <laughs> I can't think. Well, so far I'm it. Uh, <laughs> Mandy, Mandy, who's the most famous person you ever met? Jeff Foxworthy. Who? Jeff, Jeff. Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy. Oh, of course, because you're yeah. down there in Georgia and the South and so on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not showing up anymore, but you didn't get any help. No, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. And anyway, so it was Jeff. How did you meet? How did you meet him? Was he just somewhere? And what? I'm related to him. Oh, oh my you're, God. You're related to Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah, he's my second cousin. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. That only happens in the South, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your grandmother and my grandmother are sisters. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Well, that's good. So did you meet him one day and say, hey? Oh, I, I used to hang out with him when we were kids. Really? But, oh. oh, yeah. That was back in the old days when you got together. I want your autograph. So, <laughs> uh, well, I, he does I, live here in Atlanta, and I, my brother has seen him and stuff after he got mm -hmm. famous. But I, I've only seen him a couple of times since he got famous. Well, do you know you're a redneck when? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you must. People, so, okay, so you're actually related to a famous wow. person. Mm -hmm. Wow. How about you, Charlene? Who's the most famous person you ever met? I've never met anybody famous. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. And, I saw and, you. I've seen you at your, some of your shows. Maybe you, I could say you. Okay, okay. That, you're, <laughs> that's a real low bar. Real <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, uh, I could ask. Uh, I, I I could ask our friend Mike, who's the most famous person you've ever met. Uh -huh. uh, well, at this point, it goes to what the degrees of meet means. If if it's just an encounter with like a handshake and a quick little back and forth. In the presence of rock, the yeah. rock would probably it's probably oh. the rock, I guess. He's the rock, big. yeah. Okay. Um, and Sarah Palin. Well, see, yeah, Sarah I got, Palin. I got yeah. Sarah Palin. I, got I think the rock's Logan, more famous uh, than Sarah Palin. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Like, I mean, and rock's more famous than Rogan, right? Than Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. the rock is probably probably number one. I've got a I've got a big list, but the rock I think is the most famous guy on the planet right now. So probably, yeah. he is probably I think is he the biggest star in the world now? I think so. Like I mean, yeah. 
as far as uh, well, movie stars, uh, he's the least, biggest action hero in the world for sure. Yeah, except he just did that horrible movie uh, that was Black a, Adam. Black Adam, which was a complete failure. So I don't know if he can, you know, if he can open a movie as they say any longer. I enjoyed that movie. I thought it was really good. You really? But I'm a big Black Adam fan, though. Like. I have I have a statue of Black Adam from like ten years ago right there. I was actually really excited about that movie. Oh, okay. Well, you're the one, uh, Scott. <laughs> Scott, living in Plano, Texas. Anybody famous you've ever met? Uh, I'd have to go with Jay Leno. Wow. Really? Oh, good. That's a good one. You know. Get him off this show. <laughs> I didn't really want to say it, but uh, yeah, I met him in an airport in uh, somewhere. He was flying out, and I, I said hey to him and whatnot. But this oh, was just... before he was on The Tonight Show. Oh, okay, yeah. When he was yeah. really funny. Yeah. yeah, he was, yeah. I, I took him out to lunch. Oh, yeah. Or breakfast, actually. Um, uh, uh, hey, Len LaFrisco is the most famous person you've ever met. Uh, there's a, I've actually met a lot of famous people. I shook hands with Gerald Ford while he was president. Uh -huh. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Uh, Milton Berle rode in the elevator with him. Oh, uh, good, good. Peed next to Eddie Money at a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> Claim to uh, fame. Sm uh, smoked a joint with Billy Joel back in college when, wow. uh, when he was coming through town. Oh. Um, sat next to, God, I always forget this guy's name. He was an 80s rocker guy on an airplane at L.A. So, yeah, I, I seem to find these people. I don't know why. Or they find me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, of course, is my uh, and of course me, of course. <laughs> uh Paula, anybody famous? Well, Harry uh, Belafonte. Uh Will Chamberlain. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he used to cut he, because he went to our high school. And, are you on the list? Wow. Uh, oh, are you, uh, are you on his list? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he was a much older man. <laughs> I don't think he cared. Yeah, I don't think he cares either. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, but I did have his, um, um, I inherited his history book, you know, when they oh, turned no out the history books. <laughs> well, yeah, because every year you get a book somebody else had the previous year. Yeah, That's exactly. cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He, he was our high school celebrity. How many guys, how many women did Will Chamberlain claim he slept with? A lot. Thousands. Thousands. Like tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah. Well, I what I always want to do is interview Will Chamberlain and then compare notes and see if we had anybody in common. <laughs> uh, Edward <laughs> Berger. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, if, who, who, have you met anybody famous? I was once in an elevator with Joanne Worley. Oh. <laughs> he told me 10 minutes of chicken jokes. <laughs> and you could hardly wait for the elevator door to open. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Charlie, anybody famous you ever met? Well, probably the most famous, probably not to y'all, but to me, the most famous person I've met was Isaac Asimov. Oh, wow. 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 See, That's everybody went, wow. Cool. Yeah, because <laughs> it's been a whole day training. with it. Really? really? Yeah. Wow. Who and, was it again? Uh, who? Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov. He he uh, wrote, he wrote the uh, book that became two thousand one as an example, and was what was called a futurist. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He wrote five hundred and twenty nine books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was really good. You. I have one to add since Mike said, does it count if you just said hello to them? Yeah. Tone Loke. Yeah. Tone Loke. Tone Monkey Loke. Goldina, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm trying to remember who Tone Loke was. He, did wild he was a he's just a rapper from oh, the 80s. Wild thing. But I it was the first time I went to California and we were we were sitting out in front of a TGI Fridays, waiting to go in and eat, me and my sister and my mom. Mm -hmm. And he comes walking up with his entourage. And this is like at the height of his fame when he was had his wow. heads up. And I saw him and I went, yo, Tone, what's happening? <laughs> and he was like, what's up, baby? And like with that voice. And my mom and my sister both just looked at me like, who the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> and now you can go to that same TGI Fridays and he will serve you appetizers. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Charlene? I thought of somebody, Sinbad. Sinbad. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. See, 
The only famous people I can think of when I worked at the Senate, I met the vice president and a lot of the uh, senators, but that doesn't count. You've been to the White House, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I was at the Supreme oh. Court for their Christmas party. Dang. Wow. wow. That was wow. impressive. They had a full orchestra there. Well, not a full orchestra, but pretty heavily. I've never been to the White House. Never been there. Really? Uh, I, and I could have been there if somebody had just been a little more considerate. <laughs> because I was good friends with uh, Barbara Botsu's daughter, Nicole. Mm. And at a certain point, she got married to Bill Clinton's brother. Oh, uh, Roger? Roger Clinton. Roger? Was, it Roger, was it Roger Clinton she married? I think so. I think so. But anyway, she got married in the White House. In fact, Ruth Bader Ginsburg presided over the wedding ceremony. Wow. And I was very good friends with her. Well, she invited Will Durst, but I didn't get invited. Mm. <laughs> So I never got to go to the White House. Well, if I hadn't been young, too young, I would have met Jimmy Carter. Because when he was governor, my sister and brother got to be pages, mm. you know, in the, the mm -hmm. state house. And because mm -hmm. my uncle was in state government, he flew planes for the governor and lieutenant governor. But they, I was too young, but they got to meet him because he was governor. Well, uh, Carter was the only president I've ever met, okay, mm -hmm. because I interviewed him. Uh, but I'm glad it was him rather than a lot of other presidents. I mean, yeah. you know. um, but there weren't any others. There weren't really weren't any others. I, uh, um, I interviewed Ted Kennedy when Jack was running for president, but that was about it, you know? So, wow. yeah. And I, you know what I thought about Ted Kennedy when I interviewed him, God, this guy's dumb. <laughs> I mean, because you compared him to Jack, and it was a night and day in those days, at least, you know. But anyway, so what else is what else is new? Anything else new that we're we're avoiding talking about? We we don't want to talk about politics in particular. No, no. But there's nothing happening there, really. No, it's just you know, just uh, the latest mass shooter is still on the loose. I, no, you know when it's gotten to the point. Every day, there's a mass shooting of the day. Yeah. Really, it's yeah. getting ridiculous. But that, you're getting you're, hmm? you don't see it anymore. You don't hear it. It's just well, I'm wondering. See, I, I I'm wondering how much of that is that we have media so available to us that these stories get to us faster and on a more frequent basis. You know what I'm saying? In other words, uh, like, for instance, all the news net networks now are looking for a mass shooting. But, you know, there are a lot of shootings. Huh? So they don't have to look very hard. They don't have to look very far. But the fact is, we're looking for them where maybe we didn't look for them before. Uh, does that make sense? The connectivity is showing us how much actually was there as opposed to, you know, it increasing. Well, the world has gotten smaller. That's for damn sure. And part of that getting smaller is the fact that we have all this social media and, you know, immediately you find out when something happens. I mean, it comes out over my watch, mass shooting, blah, blah, blah. Yep. You know? And I probably got the message on my watch two minutes after it took place. You know, so, I mean, we, the speed at which uh, this information is disseminated is kind of interesting, to tell you the truth. But... Uh, uh, so yeah, but uh, it's 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 depressing. That that part of it is depressing. Let's see here. The happy news? Is there happy news out there? No. Okay. We lost we lost a guy who I liked a lot, Jerry Springer. Mm. Oh yeah. Yep. Who he ran the dumbest show on TV and was one of the smartest guys running it. You know, yep. it was just amazing. And I and I always liked Jerry because at one point I said to him, you know, you're a really intelligent guy. I love your politics because he was a real lefty and all of that. And I said, uh, uh, gee, I just, you know, I, I, I just wonder, why do you do that show? He says, oh, it's just a stupid little show. He said, it makes me a living. I don't mind doing it. But if you ask me, I'll tell you, that's the stupidest show on television. <laughs> you know, he would never once tried to ever say, oh, well, you know, we're really trying to serve a public service here. No, no. he would never say that. And that's he said what, that on Letterman. He said that exact same thing. 
he, yeah. he buried his own show on Letterman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he didn't want you to think any, I, I think people thought too little of him because he was a lot smarter and a lot more intelligent and a lot more capable. Um, but that whole show started out being a, Don, a Donahue style show. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I think t two Nazis got into a fight with a, a, with a <laughs> rabbi or something on the show. <laughs> And and they said, I think we have a format. <laughs> yeah. And from we that went on, to a, we went to a taping of Maury a couple of years ago, which was filmed in the same studio in Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah. And it was the same thing. They, you know, the, the producers are up there telling, okay, now when they say this, you gotta go boo. And when they say this, you gotta go, and it was just it was such a, a circus. It was unbelievable. Well, they did it, they do it up in Connecticut. All yeah. the shows. Uh, Maury was done there. Spring yeah. was done there. Um, and that other guy. Uh, uh, the, did Morton Mor da was Morton Downey there as well? No, Morton yeah. Downey was down here in New York City. Oh. Who, who was yeah. the guy that was Springer's bodyguard there? What was his um, name? Wilkos. Yes. Steve yeah. Wilkos. Yeah, he does a show out of there. There's the the a the big studio a lot of studios up there because cheaper to do a show up there than to do it in manhattan right and you would say well but then you gotta you know you gotta uh, lim limo all these people up to connecticut still cheaper than doing it in manhattan yeah so they do all those shows up there and um um it was uh uh he 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 did his all his shows up there mm -hmm. and then recently did a judge jerry show <laughs> yeah it just never stopped, you know. But he was on he, Dancing with the Stars. He was on Dancing with the Stars. He was the first host of America's Got Talent. Was he? what? Yes, really? yes, yeah. yes. Wow! First season it was on. He was the host. Wow! Yeah. With the Hawk? Was it with David Hasselhoff? I don't no. know. No, who was on the show originally? Uh, uh, I'm trying it was to. The Hawk. It was uh, Ozzy Osbourne's wife. Yeah, I was born. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember Jerry Springer on there at all. No. Yeah, he was the host. Hmm. He was the you know the MC as it were. Oh, the MC. I see. Okay. Okay. He wasn't was one judge. I remember that. I do remember that. You do remember it, see? I, I do. Simon yeah. Cowell was on there, wasn't he? Too? No, he he didn't join it till many years later. He been here's what happened. He tried to sell that show in England. Uh, and England didn't want it. So he sold it to the United States mm -hmm. and they put it on and it became kind of successful in its first year, not a giant breakout hit, but in a couple of succeeding uh, seasons, it became quite big. And all of a sudden England said, well, let's do it here. <laughs> so he became one of the judges on the one in England, but not right. the one in the United States. And the reason he said he started that show, did you ever hear the story? So the reason he started the show is he loves dogs and he wanted to find the <laughs> world's best dog act. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and he also was hoping that along the line, he would find a talking dog. <laughs> But he he but he found some great dog acts on that show. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was one that won in England uh, that was incredible, just incredible. So yeah, he loved do dog acts, and then he started doing the one in America about maybe six, seven seasons ago. You know, yeah. but it was always his show. Oh, and, he owns it. Though. Yeah, he owns it. Yeah, you know, he never owned. Uh, for instance, he never owned America's Got uh, rather American Idol. Idol. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the British version of that, which was called Pop Idol, mm -hmm. which he was again just a judge. Uh, and uh, but anyway, so uh, we lost we lost uh, uh, Jerry. He he died of pancreatic cancer, which he just found out about like four or five months ago. Yeah, it went really fast. Well, it goes pretty fast if they you know if it's if it's advanced. Okay. Wow. Because you see, they never find it until you got it bad, you know. That's a terrible thing. So they're tr they're trying to get tests now that will uh, allow you to find out whether you got pancreatic cancer early. And early on, they can they can probably do something about it. Yeah, by the time you get symptoms, it's too late. Well, he went in for something else, mm -hmm. and they figured out what it was. And they said, "By the way, you got pancreatic cancer." 
So, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it was pretty terrible. I hate to see that happen. He, could, he had a number of good years left in him and a number of really bad TV episodes that he could have produced. <laughs> uh, I mean, how many here watched Jerry Springer? Come on and, and admit it, okay? There was a, probably an 18-month period where I thought it was fantastic and then it wore itself out. Well, you get tired of it. You know, it's the same thing. You know, they they have the uh, the prize fight bell go off, and then people start fighting with each other. <laughs> I remember the days where it was actually kind of a legitimate talk show. Well, remember yeah, the, the very early beginning. day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's when I watched it, and then it just got it just started just getting trashier and trashier, and I don't, you know. Well, he found something that worked for him. Do you know that at one point, at its height, where people were beating each other up on a daily basis. He beat out Oprah. Yeah. 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 I would have I would have actually wanted to watch that show with Oprah beating some people up. <laughs> that would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, I would have enjoyed that. No end. I but, found a picture. That's me and the Rock's mom, and I'm wearing a Black Adam t-shirt. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. She's good. She's a tra- She's very attractive. Cute. Ada Ada is very attractive, yes. Yeah. Wow. And now he comes from royalty. He comes from wrestling royalty. Mm-hmm. Ada is part of that. Yes. Yeah. There was this, uh, this, uh, th- these guys that wrestled called the, Samo- what was it called? Samoans? Uh, the, the uh, wild Samoans are part of the family. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he, his, his relatives were all wrestlers yes. uh, in, in this fighting Samoans. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the name was exactly. And that, then he became a wrestler. And that's how, you know, he got his fame. Shecky and I used to talk about this stuff all the time because he used to watch The Rock's grandfather. His name was High Chief Peter Maivia. And he would be at Madison Square Garden all the time on the same cards that guys like Bruno San Martino and all that. Yeah. Uh, High Chief Peter Maivia, extremely tough man, Mm -hmm. uh, but legitimate royalty in the Isle of Samoa. Like he's legitimately like part of the like uh, the royalty there yeah. and uh and they promoted wrestling out of hawaii as well but he started so, he, he, oh i'm sorry I, I, thought, I was just gonna say the rock's father um he uh worked out at a gym here in hayward and when my husband was a little kid he used to see him working out really rock johnson yeah. yeah and he married uh-huh. Adam. they're not married <laughs> before but rocky johnson yeah he married into the family mm-hmm yeah, and uh, you know, then he changed, and he doesn't use the Rock anymore. I don't think he uses Dwayne Johnson. Johnson, but, you know, just when it suits him. Whenever he does anything with WWE, he's still the Rock. Like they've got a whole bunch of uh, A and E has A and E on Sundays now has basically put all their eggs in the WWE's basket. Is, Every he, Sunday, is he still uh, is he still uh, uh, contracted to the WWE? No, they do like one-offs. I'm, I'm sure he's got some. No, no, but here's what I'm saying. Yeah. What happened was for a while there, he was still being managed by them. Yes. Uh, and they got a take of everything he made. And yes. then he became, literally, he is the biggest star in the world. I, I think that if you looked at box office and everything else and yeah. he made and so on, he's the big m- biggest star in the world. Um, Outside of like... In, and in at the, what uh, point, what point did he not owe his, uh, his money anymore to you know, the WWE. I think it was after, I think it was after the remake of Walking Tall and like the the Tooth Fairy. He had a few like early on movies and then at that contract, I believe expired. What did he do? Decide to do terrible movies as long as he was still <laughs> under contract? Because uh, the Tooth Fairy was not one of the better pictures he made. No, but I think that was disney or a disney imprint or whatever though so it was a big money deal like yeah. like he presented at the oscars that year and stuff and this is before he like really really blew up but marjorie normally wouldn't care about somebody like the rock like dwayne johnson always says to me he's really likable he is, he is. He, i mean he, he, he he's the kind of movie star you go to a movie to see the star you don't go to see the movie you know and that's why he's able to open a picture, you know. That's why he's able to make a bad picture like uh, what we're talking about, the uh, Black Adam, like Adam, and and still come out smelling like roses. You know, he made a lot of good pictures too. Come on, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not saying what he didn't. 
Yeah. You know, I think and I, and I really like Black Adam too. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, you did yeah. like it. Okay. You're you're the one. I'm the one. Yeah. By the way, you know, we're only well, what is it, 23 days away from a really big day in television. Okay. The Same beginning point. of a new streaming channel, Max. <laughs> is this hbo yeah it's no HBO. it's not hbo in fact the new slogan should be something like that it's it, it, it's not movies but it's also not hbo i <laughs> know <laughs> yeah. uh, they're doing away with the name hbo really? yes and they're turning into max and they're combining yeah, this discovery programming right yeah with HBO programming, and is Cinemax involved in this? Anymore? No, it's, you know, it's just called Max. I don't know what's happening to Cinemax. Okay. You know, that's such a mistake, in my opinion. Oh, it's I agree. The biggest mistake in the world. I mean, HBO is a brand name. It's yeah. a yeah. It was here first. Brand. It was here first. Yeah, this is the original. Yeah, exactly. But it has. Has a- anybody watched Beef on Netflix? Now oh, that's yeah. what we're, we're watching. <laughs> we're, that's what we're currently watching. We're, I we're, loved it. We have one episode left. Now, yeah. you after love every it? episode, are you like? Yeah, at <laughs> first it didn't catch me, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, this is well, good. It, explain to me what you like about it, because we like it. We don't dislike it, but I, I don't get what everybody's crazy about it for. I just, lo- I just thought it was a great story. Just all the twists and turns and everything. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's just that for a while, it's all kind of wobbles around. Mm-hmm. If they had to, if they only did four episodes, then it could be this great thing about, you know, road rage incident that just escalates and escalates and escalates and escalates. But that's not exactly what happens here. Well, they just, like I said, it just, to me, in several of the episodes at the end, I was like, what? I mean, I was just like. I don't know if anybody else would. Well, be that all way. I we know is the car just went over the cliff for the end of the episode. Okay, we're you down. To, to we're down. You to got the... lots more to see than we well, got. Tri- one episode left. One episode. It's trippy. Left. Get ready. It's trippy. Oh really? Okay. All yeah. right. We're gonna watch. Anybody that. else watch a rabbit hole? Yes, I'm I watching rabbit hole. That. I really huh? like that. You weren't able to get into it. You say no. I'm. No. Yeah, I kind. I, I kind of like it. It's kind of like a you know, puzzle box, yeah. which you can't figure out exactly what's going on. Yeah, but lots of twists like, and turns. Yeah. Do you watch, watch White Lotus at all? Or? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We yeah. love that. Yeah. Didn't yeah. like the first one as much as I liked the second one. Oh, really? Yeah, the mm. second one is so much better than the first one. It is. Uh, what, about, what about The Diplomat? I'm liking it. Now, you, I started I, watching it, but I didn't. I only got like five minutes. You watch it again. I was just telling Alex when we were talking before what you said. Yeah. I think it's really good. We'll check it the, out, Alex. Yeah, but a lot of these shows are on going to be on Max, and I don't know where to find that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I just, I don't know why you take a, you buy a company, you, you inherit this massive brand name yeah. almost as much a brand name as coca-cola or yeah and Absolutely. it was the first one right yeah. yeah and and you you're going to do away with the name hbo and the title i mean they're going to be hbo programs there yeah but it's it's going to be called max now because we're going to get all that good you know i can hardly wait to see every guy fieri program ever made <laughs> I just wonder what purpose that serves. It doesn't make any sense. Right, well, apparently, 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 nobody was watching watching Discovery, so they're forcing it on you. Yeah, yeah that's about that. You know, I mean, it, it, why would you? It, Discovery had a pay channel. Sure. Why you keep all your stuff on that pay channel for the Discovery part of it? Probably yeah. because they weren't doing that well. Right. So they're going to force it on us and unload all that programming into Max. And I'm going to have to like weed through all of those things to get to John Oliver (laughs) and find out that I'm watching Guy Fieri instead. You know, (laughs) it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But, you know, I can hardly wait. I can hardly wait. I, uh, I took the granddaughter and I became part of the, uh, the, the, the group 
that allowed the Super Mario Brothers movie to make over a billion dollars. Anybody else see that movie yet? <laughs> no, but I heard it's really I'm good. I'm the only one. It's fun. You, you heard it's good? I did it's, hear it was good. I mean, I, I don't have any interest in saying it. I don't mean it, but I'm sure I just heard it's good. So, yeah. All right. Well, it, at least it's nice. There's some stuff for kids. I, I, I don't think I, even when it's free and I'm able to watch it, I don't think I will. Right. Yeah. Anybody's anybody seen Air? I no, seen not yet. Did you see it? No, but I'm planning to this week. Yeah, they say good. it's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. It's all about. And I'm active Jordan aficionado. I've got like 45 pairs, and uh, it's it's very accurate. Why do you have 45 pairs of Air Jordans? <sighs> I collect things, man. I collect things, and and them sneakers are. Well, every every, every week, you get weirder and weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a rabbit hole. There's a rabbit hole right there. Not that I don't like weird, okay? Yeah. I am, man. Speaking of just going back to television shows, has anybody seen the previews for the Michael J. Fox documentary? That looks good. No, I, I mean, I want to cry already. I'm just going to gear it up to just. <laughs> I saw an interview with him on CBS Sunday Morning this week yeah. promoting him. And he's really pretty far gone. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, it, it was but, hard to but, watch. But it's been a lot of years. He was diagnosed yeah. when he was 30. 29. You know? You know? Uh, but he was he's terrific. Hey, look, I just looked at the clock, and you know what? Wow. It still keeps going around and saying, <laughs> thing, Alex, you're not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, uh, thank you, Marjorie Miller. Uh, say hello to your husband for me. Love his work. I will. When I he love gets his work. Support. Love his work. Uh, Mandy, always good to have you here. It just brightens up our day, as does Charlene as well. You know, on this program, we have four women right now. That's right. Girl power. That's more women than we've, the line. Line, than we've had in the last 10 years on the Ramble. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time. No, it's a nice mixture. I really like that. Uh, I thank you uh, very much to our good friend, uh, Mike, and I will see you on the third here in New York. Uh, I got to figure out what I'm going to say. Uh, we're, it's, it's a uh, what they're calling a Sheck Fest, and it's just a memorial for Rick Sheckman. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to it'll be nice. Uh, Marjorie, you didn't want to go, right? I didn't want to go. I didn't say I didn't want to go. Oh. Are you, or you said to me, why are you going? Well, because in the beginning you poo pooed it because no, it was all the people that no, 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 from no, Letterman. No, no, I wasn't poo pooing. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Don't listen. I know I wasn't. Okay. All right. Alex, yes, trying to you were. look at her here. What? <laughs> yes, you were. No, I didn't. No. Awkward. No. No, I uh, no. Have I the didn't. argument after we're off the phone. Yeah. Yes, finish saying goodbye to everybody. Anyway, Charlotte, it's like seeing mom yourself. and dad fighting. Stop it. Uh, yeah, really. To turn this podcast around. <laughs> okay. God. Every hey. Springer, hello. <laughs> no, that wasn't what I said, but I'll tell you what I said later. Um, <laughs> it was in reference to other stuff, not that. Okay. Mm. I don't want to argue. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Scott. Thank you to uh, uh, Len LaFrisco. Uh, thank you, of course, as always, to our good friend, uh, Paula, who Marjorie all, all also talked to earlier today. As well. I did. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah. And, uh, and and you said to me, she'll be talking to you soon. And, and I said, why is she coming to New York? And all of a sudden I realized she was referring to Paula being on the show here, you know. Um, in fact, when you come to see us next time, bring all that furniture with you. Otherwise, I won't recognize it. <laughs> uh, and also, thank you, Charlie. I really appreciate it. Battling t-shirts today, huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Uh, 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 okay. And and finally, we, we have our good friend, <laughs> Edward Berger who signs us off with the immortal phrase and things that he says when he goes. That's all, folks. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Alex.